Hello Steelers and welcome to this other game of Through the Mud and the Blood. I've been enjoying this so much I thought I'd set up yet another game of it. Uh, as much as anything else to give you a bit of a demonstration of other things you can do in the First World War. Uh, it's not just trench warfare and it's not just the movement battles of 1914 and 1918 that you can play. This is squarely in the middle of the war, 1916 during the Battle of the Somme and it's the Australian attack on the small village of Poissiers. Uh, this was captured later by the Australians after heavy heavy fighting. A German strong point where they literally dug into every single uh, cellar, a building that remained. Uh, it had been hammered heavily by uh, British artillery in the lead up to it uh, and the Australians uh, with other units, British units as well, uh, attacked and were able to capture it. There's an Australian memorial for Poissier, it's one of those um, uh, military feats of Australian military history that you know a lot of people in Australia would remember or would know about the battle. It's worth reading about because it is literally house to house fighting uh, in the middle of the Battle of the Somme. And as I say, it's very different to what you would expect from that kind of fighting. You, you think about the, uh, the trenches and the big long trench lines and the whole swathes of them. You don't have to have any really on this table, and I haven't. All I've got is some ruins, uh, the road of Poissier is going through, a few uh, shell craters here and there, enough to have light cover uh, and a little bit of heavy cover here and there, and that's pretty much it really. Uh, as I say, very similar to a lot of the First World War fight, uh, Second World War fighting in, uh, in Normandy, so if you can play those kind of games with infantry, you can play First World War games quite easily uh, with the infantry as well. Because it's 1916, the British have yet to organise their platoons into uh, the SS-143 training pamphlets method, which really splits down the platoon into uh, rifles, grenadiers, uh, rifle grenadiers and Lewis gun teams. Uh, at this point they're still learning that trade, so they were still they still had pretty much you know rifle uh, rifle teams or rifle sections within the platoon more rather than anything else. But what, what I have done is I've given them a lot of bombers as well because there were far more bombers, uh, a lot, lot more Mills bombs being handed out during the Somme uh, as they start to develop those particular tactics. And I've also given them a Lewis gun team as well just to, to uh, add to the mix. Just to make it a little bit different from the, the post-1917 stuff. Uh, the Germans, on the other hand, have got three sections or a group of uh, infantry, each of eight men, and they're defending him from this way. I've done it on this smaller table as well. It's only a three by four size table uh, because I wanted to get the action in very quickly instead of moving slowly. I'll be using the blinds again, although obviously I know what they are, but here the units are relatively generic anyway, so it doesn't really matter which one sets up. The Germans have got an MG uh, 0815. Uh, light machine gun in one of their sections, but that's the, the, the main difference. The other thing I'm doing as well, and I'm experimenting here, is I'm actually going to use the force morale uh, from chain of command, because this is one thing that through the mud and blood really misses, is the force morale. It's, it's almost a fight to a death, or when the players decide to stop, as you may have seen in my previous videos. Uh, what the force morale does is it then forces your side to stop fighting. And it can be literally just lifted straight from chain of command. You could also pretty much lift it from sharp practice because they're very similar. Uh, and just use their charts to decide when something bad happens that you roll the dice and see what happens to the force morale. So I've already rolled up the force morale. I've set up the, the units here. What I'll do is I'll show you the table as I normally do. I'll show you the forces. We'll talk about those. And we'll just get this game started really. And see if the Australians can capture Poissier again as they did the first time round. So this is our table, as I said this is on a 3x4 sized table, so the uh, Australians are heading up the table here along the long axis where the Germans are heading into Poissier. And you can see in the centre this is the ruins of Poissier. Uh, it was pretty similar to this in uh, July of 1916. It's no particular part of the village itself but just a representation of it. Same with the Australians, they're no particular uh, units, they are just a representation of the Australians at the time. The same with the Germans as well. So we've got four blinds for the British, that's the platoon there coming in, and we've got three blinds there for the uh, Germans and they are also coming in. So they've got the two here already in the ruins you can see 
And then they have their third, which is kind of a reserve blind, which is going to be heading down that main road to take up positions. So I didn't want everybody on top of each other straight away. I wanted a little bit of movement at least. And as for the forces involved, let's have a quick look at these. So these are the German defenders over here. Let's just get those into focus. There they are. So we've got three group. Each of these uh, is made up of eight riflemen. Uh, with a couple of bombs in them, so that's the ones that are, are headed by uh, Gefeiter Hans Stürmer and Gefeiter Franz Adler. They are status one big men. And then we've also got Gefeiter Hermann Lang, and his he has the MMG team, sorry, LMG team of the MG 0815. So a little bit more hitting power there, and they are uh, they they're being commanded by uh, Hauptfeldwebel. Kurt Schmidt again, our man uh, with a plan. He's a status three big man. Over here we have the Australians, and in this group again we've got four sections, each made up of eight men, uh, led by a corporal. So we've got Frank Cable here, Jake Shoreditch, Albert Plasto, and Bert Bromley, uh, our heroes with this with the lantern jaws uh, chins, and we were uh, again commanded by Lieutenant Henry Millwall and also our uh, Sergeant Frank Blackwall. And I said these ones are a little bit more generic than the uh, ones in 1917 because they were kind of just finding their trade really with uh, dividing up those platoons into different particular sections. So each of these sections actually has four bombers in them because they were given a large amount of Mills bombs during the Battle of the Somme. And also we have uh, one section under Burr Bromley with uh, the LMG. So that's just the Lewis gun down there. Uh, again, we're still with uh, with no bombers in there. They're just riflemen and the Lewis. So we've got basically three sections of bombers. So as I say, slightly different, uh, a little bit more. Maybe I don't know. Are they vanilla? Are they, is it is it generic? I'm not sure. But I said I'm also using the force morale as well from chain of command. I've already rolled for this. The Australians have got ten, so they're in good spirits. Whereas the Germans, they rolled an eight, so they're in a less good spirits. Uh, so that's really the setup. So I will start pulling out the cards. You can see here we have the British blinds, the German blinds, and time for a schnifter. Again, what I'm going to do is in the similar games, if you want to see how this is played out, have a look at one of the earlier mud and blood games that I played, and you'll see how the cards are done. I'm going to do most of this off camera. Uh, and then just show the action and what has happened with those card pulls. So I'll get that set up, get started, and let's see who wins. Okay, now first move, the British blinds was pulled, so they've actually moved forward. Uh, these blinds here, they've only used two dice of movement for these front ones, but three dice of movement for these ones here. So it means they've got an extra action dice for spotting. So these are going to try to spot them. These are going to try and spot the Germans here. We need a 10 or above, you need a 9 anyway because they're in medium cover and also they're stationary, so that becomes a 10 or above. So for the first ones, let's see if they do. Oh, they've spotted them, so that is Herman Lang and his men. So I'll set those up in a second and then see if they've spotted these ones. 10, they've spotted them as well. Uh, the Australians have obviously got uh, good eyesight and that is Franz, uh, Franz Adler and his men. So I'll get those set up and we'll move on. So here we are, this is uh, Franz Adler and his men. Uh, I've also uh, deployed their Hauptfeld Wilbur as well with this. Um, is it Kurt Sturmer? I can't remember. can never remember the names. Kurt Schmidt uh, with these guys as well. I'd not really said exactly where he was going to go on. I just allowed them to put their big men wherever they wanted when they deployed them. And then over here as well, we have uh, our Herman Lang and his group as well. Uh, this is the one with the LMG. So that is in a good position to be firing down that street. Now what happens here is because they haven't had their uh, cards put into the deck, they will operate on the German blinds card if that gets pulled. They'll still operate on the time for a snifter card anyway, uh, but they can only fire and spot. So they're going to hopefully try to be spotting these Australian blinds as they're coming down the main road towards them. So we pulled the German blind card just before time for a snifter uh, and they've moved forward the blind at the back. That's only moved six inches though. They're trying to get it round to this corner here so they can at least hold uh, the crooks in the road there. 
The two units that are on the table can't fire at the British until they're spotted. They've got two action dice which they can use to spot the blinds though. So they're going to try and do that. So the first one is trying to spot these ones here. This one is trying to spot these ones over here. They are starting on a 9 that they need on 2d6. However, these have moved using 2d6 for their dice, so that gives them a minus 2 on that score, so it takes it down to 7. They're also using their extra dice, because they've got two action dice, their extra dice, to spot as well, so it takes it down to a 6. They could have two attempts at spotting at 7, but they're going to have one attempt each at spotting at 6. So let's see if we can spot the first one. 6, yes, so that's been spotted. So that is Frank Cable, and then the other one over here, again, six and above, eight, that has also been spotted. So Burt Bromley. So if they had saved one of their action dice, they would now be able to fire at them, but then they haven't because they were trying to spot, so it goes straight over to uh, the British. I'll get these set up. Uh, that, well, it's the uh, end of the turn anyway, because the next card is the time for a snifter. So what I'll do is I'll put the British cards into the deck with the German cards, We'll uh, deal those out and see what comes up next. So here we have Bert Bromley and his boys. They've got the LMG, the Lewis gun. Uh, they're probably wanting to get that set up so they can fire down that long axis of the main road. And then over here we've got Corporal B uh, Cable and his chaps. Again, they can't do anything this turn, but their cards have been put into the deck. You can see here. So they'll all get shuffled together with the Germans and fingers crossed uh, the Australians will be able to get the jump on the Germans otherwise they may be sitting targets at this point. But let's just see what happens. Well luckily for the Germans they pulled out their fighters Franz Adler's card first. So he's getting his men to fire at Bert Bromley and his LMG team. There's nine of them firing. Uh, they're firing at close range so they need three and above. Uh, however, they are killing on a 6 because they're in medium uh, cover and shocking on a 5. So let's see how many hits we get. 3 and above first of all. And yeah, that's a reasonable amount to move. So that's 5, 6 in total. Let's see what effects of those are. Uh, so that's 1 kill and 2 shock on the first Australian. So they're starting to take fire already. Uh, let's see if that, sh if that kill is on Burt Bromley himself. We roll a d10 in Mud and Blood, and if you get less than the number of kills, yes, it's a kill. On, it's a hit on him. A2, no, it isn't, so it's one of the rifles. So we'll just get rid of one of those. Place that with a casualty figure. First Australian casualties. All right, amazingly quickly, uh, they pulled the time for a snifter card out. So it just goes over to anybody who hasn't activated this turn, not including big men. They, they can do things, but they can only spot or fire or deploy. So... Uh, Corporal Plasto and his men have deployed into the ruins here behind uh, Bromley and his men to give him a bit of support. Unfortunately Bromley can't reduce the shock here of this unit when they're going to fire but he, he can at least get them to fire. So they're going to fire over here at Franz Adler and his men. Uh, then we've also got uh, Cable and his guys, they're going to be firing up here at uh, Herman Lang and his men, they will then be firing at uh, Bromley and his men. So it's all simultaneous, so any effects are just uh, discounted until the end of the turn. So, you know, any, any kills or anything are just not included at this point. So we'll work our way through. We're starting with Bromley and his guys. So they're firing, first of all, with uh, six rifles. Actually, no, sorry, it's five rifles because one of those men is a crewman with the LNG. So they've got one, two, three, four, five. So it is six, I do apologize, but minus one because of the shock. So we'll do these first. They're hitting on the three or above. So that's all of them hit. Uh, and they are also in medium cover. So six of the kills, five is shock. Let's see what we got. We've got one kill, no shock. Is that kill on the either of the big men? So we'll look at one and it is. A four, no it isn't, so it's just one of the riflemen. Then we've also got the LMG, and the reason I'm rolling these separately is because uh, if you roll more ones than sixes, it's a stoppage, uh, and they have to clear the, uh, the, the, the barrel before they can continue firing again. So let's just see. Uh, we've got uh, no more ones than six, because there's only one one and two sixes in there, uh, but everything else is hit, so that's what, seven hits in total. 
So same again, six is our kills, five is shock, so that's another kill and a shock as well. So let me just put a marker there so I remember. See if that kill is on either of the big men, the one on it is. No, it isn't. So another rifleman off. So they're taking some hits already and they have that shock. I'm just going to sort those out and put that shock on before I move on to the next. So now we've got Herman Lang and his gang are firing over here at Bromley. Uh, first of all with the rifles, seven of them. Same again, three plus is a hit because they're close range. So let's have a look. So that's just one miss. There's a lot of hit in here. So we've got two, four, six hits on Bromley and his guys. And let's see what happens to them. Same again, they're in medium cover. So six is a kill. Five is a shock, so that's one shock, one kill. Let's see if that kill is on Bromley himself. One and it is. Zero, ten, no it isn't, so it's another one of the rifles. So they're taking some hits, these guys. And they've also got their LMG, which is firing as well. The LMG 15, so th uh, threes and above. However, it has actually rolled more, more ones than sixes, so that has a stoppage, uh, but it has hits with one, two, three, four hits, but it also has a stoppage. I'll put a marker on that in a second so we know. And the four hits are two more kills and another shock. God, they are taking some right hammer here. So they're now on four shock and two more kills. Let's see again if that's Bromley. Four, no, it's not. He's obviously been able to dodge out of the way of these bullets. Then we have our final bit of firing here. Frank Cable and his guys, they are firing at Herman Lang and his men. So same again, threes and above are hits. There's no LMG firing there, it's just rifles. So that's hitting, that's hit six of them. We are gonna have to, if the Australians need to move forward, they're gonna have to close this LMG down as quick as possible. But that's six hits anyway. Let's have a look, we've got, oh, uh, one kill and four shock on those. Let's see if that is on Lang himself. Let's roll that. Three, no it isn't. So a rifleman off and four shock. Right, in the next turn we've got Frank Cable uh, has moved his men first slightly forward. The German blinds came out and they moved their blind slightly forward, five inches, uh, using all three dice to try to get to those buildings there. But Frank Cable has also moved forward with his men with one dice and then used their second action dice to fire at them. Three and above. Uh, so that is, yes, uh, <laughs> four hits on those. They're trying to keep the heads down as much as possible of that LMG team because that seems to be causing a lot of problems. And let's have a look, we've got no effect, four, three and a one, so nothing, unfortunately. The German commander, Kurt Schmidt, has pulled his card. He's also thrown in a status one command card, which they had, so that's given him four statuses. He's reduced shock on uh, the group over here under Adler, so they are no longer shocked. And then he also gets them to fire as well. And then he's tried to move, but he's only moved so far. Uh, he was going to try to come over here and deal with their shock as well. But he's only made, managed to move so far because the dice were, were against him. But these guys are firing. Seven rifles, uh, Bromley and his guys again. So they're hitting on threes and above. Oh, let's have a look. That's five hits. So let's see what happens to them. Again, six is a kills. Bloody hell, six and a five. So that's two more kills and another point of shock. So let's just put that shock on before we see if those kills are on Bromley. A two and they are. Seven, no it's not, so it's two more of the rifles. They are slowly disappearing. Well, I say slowly, they're pretty fast disappearing. At least they've still got that LMG in there. Right, we just activated uh, Sergeant Blackwell, Frank. He has run forward. Well, what he's done is uh, basically shouted at uh, these guys, uh, plus those guys to bomb, run forward. They managed to roll t uh, 12 on their 2d6, so they managed to go really far forward. I was hoping they'd get within four inches of those so they could close assault them, because there's probably a relatively good chance they'd win there with their bombers. But they didn't. Uh, he then also moved forward himself. He used British Status 2 and a Status 1 command initiative card to reduce their shock uh, for Bromley, so he's brought that right down. Now, uh, I wasn't sure if uh, to get them to fire or not uh, with that extra one, but he's decided I'm going to 
play it safe, well, I'm going to play risky, should I say, and hope that Bromley's card comes up uh, in this next, in the next, before the uh, the Germans do, so they can fire their LMG back at the Germans before they get to clear their LMG. But let's just see what happens, and fingers crossed for the Australians. Right, on the time for a snifter card, uh, we've managed to get the British blinds slightly further forward to try to get into infiltrate into these buildings here without being spotted. LMG is opening up uh, from Bert Bromley, however, the Germans uh, from Lang are going to be firing back as well at Bromley and try and cut them down. Actually, no, they're going to try and fire at these here, Plasto and his men as they're advancing through the ruins. Uh, or will they? Ooh, tough decision. No, let's keep up the fire on Bromley and try and break that section. Right, so first of all, we've got... I'm going to fire with Bromley and his men, so uh, it's only seven firing. Uh, he will get to fire as well, so I'll just do him. Three, four, five, six is a hit. Four, so he has hit, so that's one hit. I'll just keep it to one side. Then the LMG minus one dice for the shock. <clears throat> and again, we're hitting on uh, more ones and sixes are stoppage there isn't there's three sixes and two ones so that's a miss as well so we've actually hit six in total on the germans there let's see what happens six is a kills five are shock so we're sh only shocking one but that does will affect them in the future the germans are going to get to fire back that takes their shock up to five so first of all the Germans are firing with their rifles, the six of them, but they have four shocks so I've just taken the shock, two of the shock onto the uh, the rifles. So they've actually got uh, five dice firing instead of uh, six. So let's see, uh, that one's popped so I'll just re-roll that. That was a four, so that's only two hits. So let's just keep those to one side. And then we've got our LMG and that is also down one because of the shock because they had four, so I separated it. Now with the LMG, you need to roll. You have however many dice you're firing with, in this case seven, you have to roll for a stoppage to clear it, and you need a five or a six. So you work your way through until it stops, and then it fires with the rest of the dice. So let's see, first one. Oh, five, yeah, there you go, you cleared it straight away. So they can now fire with six dice. Threes and above. I'll just take that marker off so I know as well that they've cleared that stoppage. So we've got one, two, oh, that's another five hits, seven hits on Bromley and the sergeant there as well. So let's just see how what happens there. Six has been kills, five is shock. There's only one five, no sixes. So that takes their shock up to four. There's four men in there, so they're not actually broken yet or pushed back. So they're doing okay at the moment, just... Okay, new turn, and it was the British blinds, so what they've done is they've moved that blind forward into these ruins using one dice, because uh, blinds get three dice. Second dice they used uh, was a uh, to deploy, and their third and final dice, which uh, they are using as this unit, can now fire, and they're throwing bombs and firing their rifles. So, because they're only firing half of their rifles, uh, there's only four of them, so they're only firing two, in fact, so we'll do that first, three plus is a hit, uh, six, one hit, so I'll just test that for that first of all, no, I'll just put it to one side, we'll just count them up, and then they've got their bombs, no, we'll do it separate because the bombs are different, uh, so a six is a kill, five is shock, a six, that's another kill on those, see if it's on there, on uh, Herman Lang, a five is, no it isn't, so it's another rifleman. Just put him to one side for one second, and there's his casualty. So, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men left in there with five shock. Then we've got the bombs. So the bombs are different because they reduce cover by one. So let's see if they hit, first of all. If they rolled two ones more than sixes, then they would be out of bombs and only have one round of firing left. They haven't, obviously, because they've only rolled a a4 and so they get one dice per action that they use with the bombs so that's why they've got four rather than uh, their eight so they've killed one and because they are <laughs> reducing the cover down to light cover uh, it's a kill is a uh, six is a kill four or five is shock so that's two more shock on those so that takes them up to seven but another kill as well let's have a look see if that is on our man Herman Lang just put these shock on so I remember that may have pushed them back. Let's have a little look. 
sorry, rolling on the D10. Another kill on him, a one. Yes, he's actually hit him. So let's see what happens to him. A five is he is badly wounded. So we have to see if, I think his status is reduced by one. So he's down to zero actually. Uh, so we have to test to see if two of his men, he takes no further uh, part in the game, but we see if two of his men will carry him off the table, five and a six, yes, so two of them will also leave with him, or at least try to get him off. So what that does is that actually, this is going to be some bad things happen. So we've got, these are no longer part of the, the group. Uh, I'll get those out of the way in a second. So we've got one, two, three, four men there, and we've got seven on their shock. So that they are going to withdraw uh, by the excess amount of shock. So they will fall back three inches. We've also got a bad things happen because we've got a uh, what is a junior big man wounded. So the first German uh, force morale. Let's see what happens. A two. Uh, he is wounded. It's a zero, so although they're carrying him off the table, he wasn't very well liked. Okay, as the pressure is mounting on the Germans, Franz Adler is getting his men to fire at the guys that are advancing here through the ruins. So let's have a look, threes and above, and they are hits. Ooh, that's not good for them, that's three misses, only four hits. Six is a kills, five is shot. Uh, that's two kills, <laughs> that's pretty good, no shot, two kills, no shock. Is it on there? A big man, a four. No, it isn't, so it's two of the rifle guys. Right, the Australians have used their up and atom card to get a bonus move out of the guys that just bombed, so they're piling into the remains of this section now. Uh, I've worked out the dice. Uh, the Australians have got eight, 12, 15 dice against the Germans, uh, eight, 10 dice. So we're looking for fives and sixes. Uh, six has been kills, five being shock. Slightly different to other larder games. So six has been kills, we said. Well, I think that's everybody in that German group there. So we've got one, two, three, four. Four killed. No, they, <laughs> there's, uh, there's only five men in there. So they've killed all of them and then caused one shock as well. So we'll just keep that to one side for a second. And then we'll do the same again with the Germans, see what they do. Let's have a look, same again, fives and sixes. So they've caused one shock and one kill. So we've got to see who those kills are on, first of all. Let's have a look, so the Germans, there is a leader in there, one to four, he's hit. Four, yes, he is one of the kills. Uh, the British, there's two leaders in there, let's see if one of those is hit, one of they are. Eight, no it isn't. So, uh, let me just put the shock on and I'll come back with the results. Okay, so we've got a couple of things happening here. First of all, we've got to see if the German senior leader is uh, killed or wounded. Let's see what happens to him. A three, he is lightly wounded. Uh, however, he still uh, has to roll and the bad things happen. That section is broken, so they're going to re fall back uh, 3d6 anyway. So let's just see how far back they do actually fall. So they may fall off the table. Let's have a look. Uh, no, they don't. Four inches, so they'll be in that building there. However, that's a couple of bad things happen, isn't it? So we've got senior leader wounded and also section breaks as well. So let's have a look, first of all, for the section breaking. Is a one, so that's minus one of the Germans' force morale. There might not be many Germans left, though, to be honest, from by this, by the end of this game. Uh, and then also for the senior leader uh, being wounded, a five on a senior leader wounded is a minus two. So they're already down to five on their force morale, the Germans, and those guys have fallen back as well. So that was a pretty successful attack by the British there, or the Australians, should I say. Right, we just rolled the snifter card, pulled the snifter card, should I say, and the only thing that can do anything is this German section over here. They had been revealed because this group had moved forward and they are in the open and were nine inches away, so they can actually spot them immediately. Uh, so they can just fire, they're just firing at the uh, British, the, the Australians here. So that's a look. Threes and above are hits, they're just firing rifles. And that's five hits, spread amongst them. Let's have a look, six is a kills, five is shock, because they're in medium core. 
So let's have a look. One, five is one shock, no kills. So they've got off there pretty lightly. Right, we're next on to the next turn, and it's uh, Cobra Alpo, Albert Plasto and his men. They are firing with three rifles, and then they're going to be bombing with four bombers into the Germans here. The bombers are reducing cover. But let's do the rifles first. Uh, so that's two hits from the rifles. So put those to one side, and we'll deal with those in a second. Then we've got the bombers. They're also hitting on a, I think it's a four and above this time. Sorry, I'll re-roll that. So we've got ooh, a few less hits this time, so only three hits this time from the bombs, but they do reduce cover. So first of all for our rifles, they are killing on a six, shocking on a five. Two fives, so that's two shock on them. Whittling them away I suppose. And then they reduce their, their cover from medium to light, so six is a kill, four five is shock this time. So that's another shock, so three, uh, not as effective as the Australians were hoping for, I think. Right, we're on the next snifter card, and the Germans over here have repositioned themselves into these uh, shell craters just to get out of fire, line of fire, but these are firing at them before, well, as they do that, so they're still going to be in light cover. Well, let's just see, we've got four rifles firing, uh, three plus is a hit, so that's uh, three hits. And then they've also got three bombs as well, uh, for, sorry, uh, four bombers throwing their bombs at them with all of their action dice. These are on hitting on four and above, so this time it's only three hits from the bombs. But they do reduce cover from light to the open. So let's do the rifles first of all, they're in light cover. So six is kills, five is four, five is shock, so that's one kill and one shock. Let's just add up how many we've got at the end of all this and then those three bombs uh, two and above is <laughs> is shock and uh, three or four five five or six is kills uh, so that's another kill so that's two kills and one shock let's see if it's on there uh, leader yes he's hit what's happened to him one of them anyway let's take one of the rifles off and a four is he his he is wounded, so see if any of his men take him off. Let's have a look. Uh, one, no, they don't. So he's wounded, but he's out of the game. Uh, so yeah, let me just get those sets up. Poor showing there. So because their junior leader or their junior big man has been wounded, they're going to take a force morale for that. The Germans. A three is a minus one, so they're already down to four now. Uh, the Australians are still up on ten. But then we've got our last unit here firing on the snifter card. So I'm just going to fire those rifles at the British Tommies or the uh, Australian Tommies there. Hits on threes and above. Uh, that is four hits. Spread across those. Let's have a look, see what happens. Six is a kills, five is shock. Nothing, no effect. Right, on that snifter card, let's just have a quick look at the situation as it stands at the moment. So we've still got the battered LMG section at the back here. They are slowly pulling themselves together. Uh, they maybe get back into the fight, you never know. We've also got the other bomber section over here. They've not managed to get further forward, unfortunately. Maybe this turn will fortune will fa uh, favour them, because they can't move on the snifter card. We've got this section here under the uh, auspices of uh, Lieutenant Millwall. They have pushed through those ruins, they've already cleared one and they've started causing casualties on the German section over here in the shell craters. And then in the centre we've got Albert Plasto and his men, they are slowly moving through the ruins on this side of the building, on this side of the streets and they are then pushing up as well towards this German section here, uh, causing more damage and more uh, shock on them as it goes and we've also got the remains of the last german section in here just one man uh, with the senior leader they're already on seven uh, shock so any more they will probably be off the table right here we've got some australian jiggery pokery going on what's happened is they use their up and atom card uh, well first of all the corporal over here uh, bromley Reduced shock using a British initiative card down to zero for the LNG team. They then use their up and atom card to get a bonus move, ran across the street to get them in a position so they can fire down at uh, 
Franz Adler and his mob over here, which they're going to do in a second. But then we also pulled out Second Lieutenant Millwall's card. So with his status, he has reduced shock here. He's getting this section to fire at them, and then he's also getting these to fire over here as well, because they haven't actually, in inverted commas, activated yet. They've only had bonus moves. So we're going to start with the LMG, firing on a three or above to hit over here. Try and keep their heads down at least, if nothing else. So uh, if we're rolling more ones than sixes, there is a stoppage. There are three ones in there. So yes, there's a stoppage on that LMG, so they're going to have to deal with that. However, they have hit with the other five dice there. So let's just do those first of all. Six is kills, five is shock. So that's a kill. Is it on their big man? Seven, no it isn't, so it's another infantryman off and no shock. I'll sort out our stoppage in a second. Then we've got these guys firing over here at the ones in the light cover. So let's just see what happens. The rifles, first of all, three and above our hits. Uh, that's one hit from the rifles. Six is a kill, four, five shock this time. Two is nothing. I should have waited. But then we've also got the bombers and they're chucking everything they've got. So what have we got in here? Uh, if they have two ones more than sixes, they don't. They've got two ones and one six. Uh, they're hitting on four, five, sixes. So they're not out of ammo. Uh, they have hit with four. And basically that means that they're in the open. Five, six of the kills. Two and above is shock. And <laughs> that's just three shock on those. But it is slowly grinding them down. So that takes them up to four. Against uh, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men in there. And it's Adler over here, he's used a German command initiative to drop their shock, but then they're also firing as well at the Plastow's man in front of them. Uh, three plus is a hit, so that's two misses, only firing rifles, four hits. Six is a kill, five is shock, so that's another kill and another shock on them, or one shock on them. <coughs> See if that kill is on Plastow himself. Nine, no it's not, so it is one of the rifles. Uh, it's time for a snifter card. The only person that can do anything is this group here in the Plastow. They're firing two rifles, three and above at these here. One hit. Let's just check that, see what happens. Six is a kill. No, no effect. Then they've got their bombs and they're throwing those. Fours and above this time. And let's just get rid of them. Take the cat off the table as well. She's desperate to be involved. Uh, so we've got four hits from the grenades, then taking that down to light cover. Six is kill, four, five shock this time. So that's one kill and three shock. So that takes their shock up to five. And a kill. Let's see if it's their big man or not. Let's get that in there. And on a one, it is. A five, no it isn't, so it's another rifleman. So what are they on currently? One, two, three, four, five, and five shock. Any more they will start falling back. So immediately we're straight back in with Burt Bromley uh, and his men over here. He's going to try to get the LMG to fire, but it's going to have to reduce, uh, get rid of the stoppages. So same again, eight dice. We work our way through, fives and sixes will reduce, will get rid of that stoppage. So first one, no. Second one, no. Third one. No, all the ones. Fourth one, there we go, we got rid of it. So they have four firing dice left. Turn them off, cross, remind me. Hitting on a three, four, five, or six into Albert, uh, into Adler's group again. And that's three of the hits. So pretty good there anyway. Six is kills, five is shock. Uh, but no effect at all. Our Hauptfeld Verbal has uh, emerged from this building. He's come across here, he's reduced shock with this section, and then he's getting them to fire as well. So at least they've got a man in charge now. Uh, six dice, three, four, five, six, uh, where the lieutenant is. Uh, that's not a great number, three hits. Killing on a six, shocking on a five. Uh, two fives, so that's two shocks. So that takes their shock up to three. Uh, they are getting off very lightly at this point, aren't they? We've just had Sergeant Blackwall move forward and reduce shock over here. And then we've got Albert Plastow over here with his bombers. And they're firing two rifles at Adler and his men. Two ones, two misses. Uh, then we've got the bombers. Four and them firing. And they are hitting on fours and above. 
so let's get rid of our misses. There is no, uh, there isn't two ones more than sixes, but that's four hits, and that takes them down to light cover. Sixes kills, four five shock. So that's a kill. Is it on the big man? A one, two? No, it isn't. So it's another rifle. Uh, I think that's going to force them back. They are now on uh, one, two, three, four men. So yes, they're going to fall back an inch, uh, which kind of keeps them in there. So I'll just shove them back a little bit. It's not really affecting anything at this point. Uh, but if they can keep up firing and causing more shock, it's going to force them back at some point. Right, so we've got Millwall. He's reduced shock, and then he's also getting this section as well to fire at the Germans in the trenches there, the shell craters. So four rifles, threes and above. Uh, that's three hits, first of all, so I'll just put those to one side, we'll deal with them in a second. And then also four bombers. He's hitting on four or above this time. Uh, there's no ones in there. So that's four hits. So they are hitting in open. These are hitting in light cover. Let's have a look. Six of the kills, four or five shock for the light cover. So that's a kill and a shock. Uh, I just have to remember this because of we've got the... Uh, Feldwebel in there as well, so that takes them up to four shock, first of all. I'll put that down there. So now we just put that six there, so I remember. And then we've got the four hits in open, so five six of the kills, two and above is shock this time. So, ooh, two, uh, two shock and another kill, so that's two kills and another shock, so that takes their shock up to six. Have they broken yet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight men in there. However, two of them have just been killed, but let's just see if either of those are on hits are on the senior big man. Three, no it isn't, so it's two more of the rifles. He's obviously keeping his head down at the back. So we now have six shock, and I think that's going to, well, that's going to be six men, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, any more kills on those, and they will start falling back as well. On the time for the snifter card, the only person that can act is uh, Adler over here. So they've got uh, four dice reduced by two uh, for rifles, so threes and above, firing at these guys in front. Two hits, though. Uh, six is the kills, five is shock, two threes, nothing. Well, Frank Cable has finally pulled his finger out and actually got his men into action. They've dashed through the ruins, they managed to push forward, and they are close assaulting the Germans in the shell holes here. They've got 13 dice against the Germans, 10. So it may go either way, but let's just see. Fives and sixes against uh, fives a shock, six to the kill. Let's see what we've got for the British. One, two, ooh, ooh, four kills, and... I say British, I mean Australians, I do apologise. Two shock. So let's just quickly put that shock on there and see what happens with the Germans roll. So this is going to affect them anyway now. They're, they're going to be pushed back at least anyway. So let's see how many they get. They're looking for more than four sixes if they can get them. And they haven't got a single one. They have, been, uh, but they have caused ooh, quite a lot of shock there. Uh, that's five shock on the Australians, but that's not going to affect them because they've still probably they haven't lost a single man yet. So they have defeated by four or more. They're thrown back 18 inches. They get double the shock, so another two shock on top of what they already had. So that takes them up to uh, 10 shock. So I think if they're actually on the table still, uh, 18 inches takes them off the table. So they are routed. Uh, so that's going to have to be a bad things happen roll for the Germans as well. So for a section being destroyed and a senior leader routing. So let's roll first of all for that section wiped out. They've only got four on their force morale left at this point. So let's just see what happens. Section wiped out. A four is... That's a minus two, so they're down to two. And then also senior leader routing. This is the big one. Five. Minus three, their force morale has reached zero. It's game over. The Australians have won. So Frank Cable, the little ripper, right at the very end, uh, destroyed the last remaining Germans, well, this German section, uh, forced their uh, senior big man off the table, so they were less than 18 inches away from the edge of the table, caused massive amounts of shock, and they only took a bit of shock themselves. Uh, this was also helped by the fact that the Australians in the centre had managed to push through 
the centre of Poziers here as well, uh, capturing literally building by building at this point. And they were also pushing forward here on the right hand side and closing down on Adler and his men, so it wouldn't have taken much longer. As I said, the Germans lost there, they lost five uh, force morale in total, and uh, they only had four left at the end of that turn anyway. So this is an overshot of the board as it is. The Australians have managed to force their way over half of the way up that table. Uh, done really, really well. That was a very exciting game. And to be honest, when I set it up and I chose the forces, I thought the Australians would have a really hard time on this one because three against four, basically, uh, is really in favour of the defender rather than the attacker. But it was just a combination of using those bombers and getting in close. It just shows you what an exciting game through the mud and the blood can be. Uh, I've said it before, it's slightly an older lardy game. If you want to add in little things like the force morale for from uh, Chain of Command or even Sharp Practice, then it just adds that little extra. Uh, here, this game could have continued on beyond that force morale, but it would have just become a slogging match basically until this final section was destroyed, which probably wouldn't have taken long because there's only four men in there. Uh, but that said, it still would mean you know a few more turns, whereas the force morale just ends the turn, ends the game where it kind of should do really, I guess at this point. Uh, the Australians had definitely won by this point. Had that unit held on a little longer, it may have been a different story. But as it was, there they had their fresh men in cable, so they managed to get those in and smash that German line. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed playing it. I thought that was a great game of uh, Through the Mud and Blood. Uh, and it has just made me want to play it even more. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Anyway, if you have done, please uh, leave me a comment. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already as well. And uh, thanks for watching and check out for more videos in the future.